So today I'm gonna show you one of the methods that we are developing for the characterization of protein phase separation. And this method is based on the uh, understanding of the uh, optical properties of solvatochromic dyes, uh, like the actan or prodan or lordan, uh, to better uh, highlight the physical chemical properties of this uh, new uh, novel concept in, in the biocellular uh, physiopathology. So what are protein phase separation? Protein phase separation are self-assembled structures. Uh, they can form thanks to the interaction of proteins with uh, themselves or other materials inside the cell. And these organelles are membraneless organelles. So this means there is not a membrane that is confined these structures. And this is very important because this gives to the cell the opportunity to form and achieve new functions without the requirements of forming a membrane that is kind of expensive in terms of energies. And these membraneless organelles can uh, orchestrate the physiopathology of the cell. Um, there are physiological uh, membraneless organelles like the most famous is the nucleolus, but there are also several pathological in cancer uh, or in neurodegenerative disease. And um, consider there are very few drugs that are starting to target this kind of uh, structures. And for sure, the, uh, the development of the understanding of these properties and this structure it will help to better find new cures uh, for diseases that are unfortunately are not, um, are very severe. So what's important on the characterization of protein phase separation is understanding of the type of phase because uh, depending on the strength of interaction between the proteins and the materials that drive the phase separation, you can have liquid-like phase separation uh, or gel or solid-like. And most of the time, the severity of the disease depends on the types of phase separation, which and usually correlates with more solid-like. So, and uh, this, this characterization starts uh, usually in vitro and, um, and aims to define the, what's called the um, protein phase diagram, where it's a diagram where you have two different um, um, properties like protein concentrations or variables or a ionic strength or another, uh, another properties and allows you to understand how this protein interacts and form this uh, protein phase separation. Here in the images, you can see like uh, the stress granules that are kind of physiological like, or the fuse or the Huntington disease, that's a very severe neurogener the neurodegenerative disease. What's look like sometimes having protein phase separation? For instance, the TDP43 is a protein that it can phase separate. And this phase separation, it seems to be involved in the, uh, front, uh, the front temporal dementia. And here, upon um, adding like a stress, uh, increasing the ionic strength, you can see the formation of the puncta. These puncta are liquid-like at the beginning. Indeed, they coalesce. And over time, you can see that uh, the, the number of uh, phase separation decrease, but the size is increasing. And this, these dots, this protein phase separation are moving. For instance, this one, it seems to be shuttled by some uh, kind of machinery. And the um, characterization of things that are moving in, uh, in, in especially, um, requires high spatiotemporal resolution. And the method that we are proposing provides this and can cover this range of, uh, of physics. Um, so th that's the problem. The state of the art methods are limited because their spatiotemporal resolution is not great. And um, one of the best method is fluorescence microscopy indeed, because it can be very fast, it's not invasive and can provide a very high um, um, spatial resolution. Um, but the state of the art techniques like FRAP, it's very invasive and cannot provide much information at nanoscale. Um, 
and also requires proteins that are labeled. And it starts to be well known that protein, protein that drive fish separation, if they are tagged with fluorescent protein, their behavior can be slightly different than pristine or unlabeled proteins. So for this reason, we are developing this, technique, this approach that use uh, solvatochromic dyes. Uh, these solvatochromic dyes are Acton, Prodan, and Lordan. Um, they are very famous because uh, they have been developed from uh, the fantastic studies and pioneers of studies and investigation of Gregory Weber. Um, the, the photophysics of this dye is, is not, is not, it's not trivial, but can be uh, understood in this way. Um, the uh, uh, Acton or Prodan can be excited in a, in a not relaxed state. Then at the, um, like a room temperature, there is an inter uh, conversion to a charge transfer state that can interact with uh, the surrounding. And depending on the magnitude of interaction, if it's not interaction with the surrounding water, in this case, in physiological condition is most likely water, uh, we have blue emission and a longer lifetime. Uh, if the, the water can reorganize themselves and interact with the excited state of the, uh, of, the, of the solvatochromic dye, we have a green emission. So this ladder of emission give us the information on how the water can interact with, how strong is the interaction magnitude uh, with, between the, 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 the environment, the solvent, and, um, the, uh, and the probe. In this, in this case, we are developing the method using spectral, hyperspectral detection. So all the measurements that you will see uh, will uh, have been carried out uh, with um, uh, laser scanning microscope um, equipped with a 32 channel hyperspectral detector. We actually carried on also um, investigation with PLIM, but today we are gonna show you, I'm gonna show you just the hyperspectral imaging. And the probes that we select are Acton, Prodan, and Lordan. They, their um, uh, structure, it's different on this moiety. Acton is the more uh, water soluble and Lordan has a very long aliphatic chain. So it's very poorly, it's not, it's, it's almost not soluble in water. So what's the model of phase separation that we decide to investigate? Those are uh, protein phase separation made of BSA, which is a very well-known, uh, it's, a, it's a protein that is very abundant and cheap. So we start to play with, um, with this protein and basically the, the protein they conservate, uh, the phase separation can be uh, obtained uh, putting the BSA in uh, um, uh, acidic buffer and adding the glutaral dye, the cross linker, you can, you can have the formation of these BSA conservates. So the, over, the take home message is this, that the, the BSA conservation or phase separation uh, can be controlled by protein concentration and cross, li and cross linker concentration. And we found the, the procedures and the recipe in literature. So this it's kind of the what would look like a, um, a phase separation diagram where we have the BSA and the glutaral dye. You can see that the shape and the morphology and the number of, of this uh, protein phase separation depends, um, depends on, on these two factors. We also tried um, the state of the art techniques, but uh, we found that uh, FRAP, for instance, is not giving much because these protein phase separation are very solid like be because there is a chemical bond between the proteins and the chemical bond depends on the cross linker. So the FRAP is not changing if we explore different points of the phase diagram. And FCS uh, is not really giving much information, we can see that there are still proteins uh, that are diffusing in solution. So that there is kind of a, an equilibrium or a difference, a different in concentration of protein that are mobile in solution. And you will see that will be important later. So we choose these three probes because their partition depends on the affinity, on the water affinity. And in our idea on the first model that we developed was, okay, Actan most likely is gonna be on the surface. Uh, Prodan maybe can penetrate a little bit more and Lordan should aim for the most hydrophobic pockets. 
So uh, we analyze the data with the spectral phasor uh, analysis. The spectral phasor is is the spectral is the phasor transformation of the of the spectrum. So each pixel of the image contains the spectrum. Uh, uh, in each pixel, you can find the spectrum, and this can be uh, transformed in the phasor plot. Um, and what's important is the image processing can give us information on in the soluble phase, as well as a on the um, on the protein phase separation phase. And we can use the angle on the phasor plot to understand what kind of environment. So the angle here uh, it means like from this to uh, from this angle to this angle, we have an increase of wavelength, and this means the spectrum is shifting from blue to green. So the angle is directly the measurements of the uh, water dipolar relaxation or the interaction between the, the solvatochromic dye with the, with the environment. So we start that uh, this preliminary, pre preliminary uh, phase diagram, and we discover that the probes gives uh, different information. So this means the environment that they can populate depends on their affinity. So the model in some way was correct, but here we are carrying on too many informations and it's kind of tricky and not trivial to better to understand the properties of the system. Uh, for sure, the method can give us information on the solution as well as the protein phase separation uh, state. So for this reason, we decide to focus on Actan, that is the probe that is giving the maximum shift. Uh, and the, so in, therefore the eye sensitivity. Um, and uh, the next step would be, okay, the first model uh, the, where we compare the three probes was based on the, um, on the uh, hydrophobicity, hydrophilicity of the probe. And this is a, sub an approach that has been used for the uh, characterization of, of the membranes using these uh, solvatochromic dyes. But membranes are order and uh, they have layers, while uh, in this case we have a lactase. So in, in principle, we need to shift the model from this kind of representation to this kind of representation, where the water embedded on the phase separation uh, can change the um, depending on the, the types of water that is embedded in the phase separation, we are uh, changing the, the optical properties of the solvatochromic dyes. So the, the next question is, 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 so since there are differences depend on, depending on the glutaral diet on the phase diagram, are we sure that the glutaral diet is not like affecting in some way at the nanoscale level the um, the protein phase separation and the architecture and the lattice of these uh, of these uh, uh, structures. So to demonstrate that, we uh, we did a, a FRET uh, assay where we use FITSI label BSA and Rhodamine B uh, label BSA. Uh, FITSI is the donor and uh, Rhodamine B is the acceptor. And by measuring the quenching of the lifetime of the donor, we can uh, actually as uh, measure the fret efficiency. And uh, the fret efficiency depends on the distance uh, between donor and acceptor. And we can see that increasing the glutaral diet, uh, so from 1% to 10%, we, uh, we can see an increase of uh, fret efficiency. So uh, the cross linker is actually making the, um, the lactis more uh, like tight and, and close. So the protein, distance is um, decreasing, increasing the uh, cross-linker concentration. So this, pre in, in this, in this, so this means that the interaction in some way is stronger between the proteins. And then we, we study, yeah, but most likely this very heterogeneous environment inside the phase separation depends and the response of the optical of the probe depends on the concentration. So we explore the concentration and we isolate the best concentration to study these this kind of things. And we choose the one that have the, uh, like the spectrum constant of after this concentration. So this means here we are populating all the available pockets in the, um, 
uh, in the protein phase separation. And we also use this to demonstrate that uh, this phase separation have like slightly uh, is slightly autofluorescent. So we had to develop a uh, three um, uh, three components analysis to analyze this um, this protein phase separation. So using the three component analysis and the shift, we could uh, we could measure the protein phase diagram on the droplet phase and the solution phase. And you can see here that there are regions of the diagram where the, the water embedded in the protein phase separation is different. So we can highlight and super resolve the phase diagram uh, where we have this region where is different than this region. And at the same time, in the same image, we can also have information of the aggregation state of the protein in solution. I've tried to schematize and summarize. So those are the images. Uh, uh, I've tried to summarize what's going on depending on the uh, protein concentration and cross-linker concentration. So uh, small protein concentration and, I, and as a function of the cross-linker, we can see that the color is not shifting. So this means the cross-linker is not modifying the optical properties of the probe. And this is important. Um, then in keeping the increasing the protein concentration with no cross linker, we can see that um, the color is changing. And this is due to the fact that BSA has a hydrophobic pocket. So this is, in our opinion, the binding uh, of actin to the uh, hydrophobic pocket of BSA. So in principle, we can measure the binding constant uh, following this axis. And then if we move in diagonal, so increasing the uh, protein concentration and the cross-linker, in solution, we can see that we have a formation of oligomers, and then probably the phase separation is, is, is sequestering all the protein in solution. So we, in principle, are decreasing the concentration of BSA-free in solution. So this is the overview for the soluble phase. And for the uh, protein phase separation phase and the drop in general, we call it droplet phase. Uh, moving here in diagonal, we can see that the color is shifting. So this is more uh, blue and this is more green. So in our opinion, the water embedded inside this phase separation is interacting more uh, with the proteins in this case. And here is not interacting with proteins, but can relax the excited state of actin. And this is due to the fact that the protein interaction here is maximum, protein-protein interaction. So um, the water is not interacting with, uh, with the lactase of protein phase separation. So yes, this is the summary. So low, uh, um, so this this phase of cross-linker, this amount of cross-linker have low polarity, uh, and here high polarity, and this depends on the water uh, lactis interaction. We are, we are also trying to correlating the the physical other physical properties of this um, uh, of this uh, protein phase separation. And we are trying to investigate if these uh, lactase structures can affect the partitioning of molecules. In this case, we are comparing a fluorophore respect to a protein. And we can see that the FRAP of fluorescein depends on the cross-linker concentration, as well as the FRAP of GFP embedded uh, inside the uh, protein phase separation depends on the cross-linker and uh, as well the, the, the mobility of, of protein uh, in, in the system. So in conclusion, we use actin emission and the other solvatochromic dyes, prodan and lordan, to uh, characterize and understand the physical chemical properties of the lactis of protein phase separation. We use a model phase separation and uh, we are, um, we, we show that this approach can be very important and can be very impactful on the understanding of the properties of this at nanoscale, especially because it's giving information of uh, the affinity of this protein phase separation for molecules. And that, in our opinion, can be very important for drug development. Here in this um, animation, you can see a lysozyme crystal 
and in and this is a Z scan, so it's kind of uh, it's the crystal, and uh, the crystal is purple, while this amorphous uh, the amorphous particle is uh, cyan, and so in our opinion, we can also use this approach this approach to characterize other protein phase separation, and because it's very um, you can see the shift is, is very strong. Here we're using just a simple uh, generalized polarity GP analysis. So we are making the ratio between two channels of emission and it's enough to discriminate the um, crystal phase from the amorphous phase. 